Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn of Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today I'm going to be making my version of a cheese crepe, and I'm going to be doing that coming right up. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's purchased my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. The purchase of this product helps keep this channel going, and I just want to say thank you again so very much. So let's get on into the video. Like I said in the opening, I'm going to be making my version of a cheese crepe. Now, you may say this is not a real crepe, or this is not a real omelet. It's kind of a combination of the two. So let me pull the camera down, and we'll take a look at what I'm doing. Okay, I've only got a few ingredients. Is first of all, I'm going to start off with three eggs and egg whites. I'm also going to have one tablespoon of whipping cream. I'm going to cut in here for just a second. Instead of an entire teaspoon of salt, I would go with about a half a teaspoon or even less if you're not a big salt person. I'm using a Redmond's Ancient Fine sea salt. Now you can use pepper. I'm not using pepper today. And we're going to be using one pat or a little more than one pat of melted butter. This is close to maybe a tablespoon. Now this is key to keep it from sticking. And we're also going to be using probably a cup and a half, maybe even two cups of cheese. We're going to add in later. But I'm going to use my little uh, Star Wars stick blender that my daughter and son-in-law gave me for a gift not too long back. Now, you can use a whisk. You don't have to have a stick blender. Or you can even use a fork. You just have to go really fast. Now we're going to let this sit aside for a few minutes while we're getting our pan ready. Okay, we've got our pan right here on our stove eye. And we're going to cut it on low for just a little bit just to get the pan warmed up. Another key is butter. We're going to go ahead and Make sure we have plenty, and we'll add some each time we add a crepe. And as soon as this warms up enough, we start feeling a little bit, start feeling a little bit of heat around the edges. We can increase our temperature. Now we don't want to get scalding hot. And I'm just going to take this thing here and kind of roll the butter around. And there we go. And you may actually want to cut your stove eye off and on depending on the heat. Okay, now we're just going to add some of our eggs. can even uh, use your pan as long as it's not too hot to handle. Now we're going to go ahead and cut this off just for a second because we have a lot of heat on there right now. Now if you have a little spot where you have a hole, you can just fill that in. And that'll work. I also have this, this little crepe spreader. I have not learned how to use it so well, but it does kind of smooth it out somewhat. I think I would like to have a metal one. This near is a little hard to clean. And we usually wait till the edges start turning loose. And you can kind of give it a little bit of a touch there and say, okay, it's almost ready. We're going to cut our heat back on just, just to give us a little bit more of a pop. 
just to make sure that it holds together. Now you don't even have to flip. If you don't want to, you can just go ahead and, and uh, pour your cheese or toppings. I usually mess the first one up. And we're just going to add whatever amount of cheese we want to add. I like to pretty much cover the whole thing a lot like it was if, if it was a pizza. You can use any kind of cheese that you've got. I just had some leftover sharp cheddar, a tiny little bit of pepper jack. And we'll cut our eye back on just a little bit. We want to get our cheese melted somewhat. Right, just kind of get it started. Now you can put bacon, ham, sausage, whatever you'd like at this point. For me, we're just going to go with cheese and I'm going to use that little bit of cheese right there to to seal that there's one okay we're going to go ahead and get this little bit of cheese up out of the center crucial Make sure you always have plenty of butter. Butter makes everything better. Okay, here we go for our second drop. Pan's getting warm now, so we're going to go ahead and get our, our oven mitts out. And there we go. And like I said, if you would like to use one of these guys, you can. I personally haven't figured it out yet. Maybe you have to wait until you start getting a little doneness. I don't know. Usually when I start seeing a little bit of action, I just cut it off and let the ambient heat just kind of uh, work its way through. And if you have some places that's a little thicker than you like, this is probably a good time to do the spreading. After the bottom has cooked somewhat, I think that's much better. Now I have one of these guys right here. So far I've not been able to use it. I'm thinking uh, it just takes a little more skill. I have a tendency to break the eggs. Let's see here. Let's see how this works. A little better this time. Get us some cheese. You're saying that's a lot of cheese. Well, you can use as much as you want or as little as you want. My wife says, I like it cheesy. And she said she don't like it very eggy. So, 
So I'm giving her a cheese. Okay, let's get her heat on just for a second to get some heat into that cheese. Okay. Now we're going to start the rolling process. Now be careful not to burn your fingers. going to slide this one out just right onto our plate like that. Let me wipe this excess cheese up. Probably not so much necessary but I don't want it to stick and right now we got a nice little non-stick pan and everything seems to be working really really well. So, add some more butter. And put our final little bit of eggs in there. This one is a little thicker. Not a problem. We'll cut our heat back on. The thing about cast iron is when you have the heat applied, it just wants to continue getting hotter, even if you have it on low. It just wants to keep absorbing that temperature. Okay, I'm starting to see a little bubbling action, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut my stove eye off. And just kind of let it work its magic. I'm going to do this in a little different. I'm not going to flip it. I'm just going to put the cheese directly on there once I know the eggs are done. Try this leveling process. Give it another little bit of a boost with our fire. Since I'm not going to flip this one, I want to make sure that it's done. Okay. Let's finish this one out with some cheese. cheese on this one but that's fine I'll eat this one a little cheese on this edge so when I bring my flap over it'll stick maybe this little crepe spreader or this little crepe thing will help me not burn my fingers There we go. I've had so many people tell me that they don't like cast iron because it's so hard to maintain and clean up. Here we go. Paper towel. 
can wipe up all of the excess. Now, if you do start getting gummy, you can use a little soap and water, or even just a little water. But there you go. This little crepe pan or round griddle is ready for the next morning. Now, don't them guys look good? Oh, man. Okay, it's time for a taste test. Now I'm going to take the one on the end, the last one, because that first one right there that's got all the cheese oozing out, that's my wife's. She likes extra cheese. Mmm. Now that one is really, really cheesy. Very, very good. i got to get another bite. Check this out. Oh man, that just looks so good and cheesy. You can put bacon bits, you can put sausage, ham, hamburger meat, you can even throw some vegetables in there if you want to. But uh, it's your choice on how you want to do it. And if you like to make the crepes a little thicker, where it's more like an omelet, that's fine too. And you see it's a lot easier than you think to use cast iron. Now, this morning we're just doing cheese and just leftover cheese. A little bit of mild cheddar, a little bit of sharp cheddar, a little bit of pepper jack. Whatever we had left, I just threw it in there. But uh, really good, really easy cleanup. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell and I promise I'll keep more coming. So thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I'd like to share something with you really quickly. In Luke chapter 21, verse 27 and 28, it says, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. I just want to say share the word and be a blessing. Mm -hmm.